and welcome to SideQuest, the every other week shit show we do when we're not doing our normal game shit show. Although, uh, we're doing something a little bit different tonight, so we're kind of doing an off-week game on a non-game week, if that makes any sense. Which it probably doesn't, but that's okay. We're A&D, we're not supposed to make sense. Anyway, my name is Rick Gualtieri, and I'm joined tonight by uh, the full crew. We have John Hartness, Joseph Brassi, Robert Bevan, Steve Weatherall, and Drew Hayes. Say hi, guys. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello, friends. Hi, guys. And we're doing a little bit of role reversal here. Instead instead of being the bottom, I get to be the top tonight. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh... Ugh. I was wondering who was going to do it. I'm still the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> to, steal, to steal a phrase from Drew, I guess uh, I am the commandant of this turd battalion uh, right now. <laughs> Italian. That's one of the more obscure Jerseys, I'm sure. <laughs> You're the Fuhrer of this Turd Reich. No. <laughs> oh. uh, well, now I can never use that one. <laughs> Probably rightfully so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, let us never speak of that again. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak of that one again. <laughs> All right, we should probably uh, get right into it. So we will be uh, we will be doing kind of a starting a a new not every uh, not every side quest, uh, but uh, when we feel like it game tonight, you know, just to uh, to give us uh, ourselves a little bit of a break and try some uh, some new things. So that being said, throughout uh, over the last couple of weeks through the land of uh, the kingdom of Zamel, the word has gone out that the king has been looking for volunteers to represent his interests in a new endeavor. The information was uh, was relatively sketchy, but uh, it offered a promise of uh, whatever somebody was looking for, whether it be a new start, whether it be riches, what have you. As long as you represent the king's uh, interests, there were no questions asked. Those of you who were uh, bold enough to undertake this, uh, this mysterious calling, you were uh, instructed to meet at a dock at night, it was raining. Uh, there wasn't much time uh, to uh, to do much other than board as the as the, the weather grew worse, and as uh, the ship pulled out of uh, of port, that's when uh, all hell broke loose, resulting in a night of the ship tossing and turning, swaying side by side. Um, those of you with internal digestive tracts mostly voiding them into uh, buckets, out portals, or on the people you've been stuffed into a cabin with. Ah, adventure. <laughs> do, do not all of us have digestive tracts? We'll get there. <laughs> all right. Finally, after a uh, tumultuous night, most of you were able to get to sleep, only to be awakened by the sound of knocking on the cabin door. Come on, get up. Get up, you scurvy sea, sea maggots. <laughs> I believe he's talking to you, chaps. The door is pulled open from the outside. And uh, an older gentleman is uh, standing out there, and he has a clipboard. And he looks and he says, "So this is what uh, what uh, what volunteered, huh? I've seen worse. My name's Lash, and I'm the quartermaster of this ship. I'm going to ask you all uh, to introduce yourselves. Tell me why you're here, so I can write it down for uh, for the record, just in case. Well, you go rogue later, and well, we need to kill you. Ah, bureaucrats." Well, I'm going back to sleep. What? You might, uh, you might wonder. He, he looks at you. Uh, he's like, you might wonder why I'm called Lash. It's a bit of a nickname because I'm in charge of uh, whoever mouths off on this ship, making sure they get thoroughly punished. So you might wanna, might wanna stand fast before you, before you talk back. An excellent point, sir. Yes. He will move behind whoever is closest to him. Yeah. Stand behind me, poof. It'll be fine. No one will see you back there. Who said, said that? Says the gnome oh. with the mohawk. Ow, my knees. Sorry, I thought you were luggage. <laughs> mm. Metallicazam will, will kind of stand up, brush himself off. I shall now introduce myself in order to buy time for my inebriated friend to compose his wits enough to answer. I am Metallicazam. Sorcerer, artisan, scholar, and I am in search of some, let's say, aid for a particular magical ailment. And those in need of justice and glories befitting. 
a particular ailment. Uh, the huh. half elf to Metallica Zam's right um, is still sitting where he like woke up, staring off into space. Not sure if he's looking at the uh, at Lash or not, and he just kind of goes, "What? Who are you, and why are you here?" Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm um, I'm I'm his like companion and stuff. Uh, my 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 name's Cal. Cal, uh, uh, hold on. What's what was the last part? Hashwood, right? That's that's my name. <laughs> Hi. That's it. Last shakes his head. Yeah, we get one of these in every voyage. Absolutely scintillating. The elderly half elf cowering behind the, or trying to cower behind the gnome, speaks up. And I'm Stan Dandeliver, gentleman bandit and professional folk hero. And my interests are definitely in line with whatever the king is doing, I assure you. <laughs> um, I, I, we're on a boat, right? Yes. We're on a boat. That's what the map says. I bend over and vomit a, a color spray spell over the side. You're actually in a cabin. <laughs> Well, then in, in the corner. <laughs> okay. A lot of splashback from that move. Whoa! Huh. Uh, hello, friend. My name is Jorcerer the Sorcerer. I'm not even sure I'm supposed to be here. I was waiting in a dark alley in the rain for someone else. <laughs> I would like to second that I don't believe he's supposed to be here. <laughs> The gnome looks at Jorcerer, shakes his head. Jorcerer the sorcerer. <laughs> Jerky the worky. <laughs> a little part of me expected him to sound like Nadorf the hung. <laughs> I am Alphonse Lightbringer. You can call me Al. <laughs> yeah. He looks and he's nods. He's like, yeah, you remind me of a uh, long lost pal. Mm. <laughs> I'd say I could be your bodyguard, but I'm already his, I think. Uh, I'm actually in the market for a bodyguard. I'll just call you Betty. <laughs> he tur he turns and he's like, Scabby, Scabby Pete, get your ass over here and bring a mop. You're looking at where you puked in the corner. It's pretty. Up to Scabby Pete. A stench <laughs> fills the air and you see flies buzzing around as a rather dirty looking man steps forward. Hi, everyone. I, I'm Pete. I'll be mopping up your waist. <laughs> My waist is much cleaner than this man. I'm prettier. Are you mopping it with your face? That is some <laughs> wild shit, my dude. What did you eat? Probably some wild shit. Lash shakes his head. He's like, Scabby Pete here, uh, as far as we know, has never bathed in his life. Except uh, except that one time he got washed overboard about six years back. You should try that again. About two years before that, before that as a as a stowaway, but nobody wanted to get close enough to him to throw him overboard, so he's been here ever since. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, when I am able to prepare my spells once more, I can piss upon you if you like. A, a spray of color. I don't know about the rest of you, but I could really do with some sea air right now. <laughs> yeah, I like hey. would kind of like to be far away from that guy. Like, really far away. Uh, Shipman, how, how far is it possible to get from this man? <laughs> yes, it seems I was created with the ability to smell, for which I am now cursing my creators and God. Oh, it's okay, man. Mm. I'll get you some good stuff to smell. It'll be all. It'll be all right. We'll find something that works on you. He knows. He's like that's it's, that's okay. Sc Scabby Pete's here to walk, clean up, and empty out your chamber pots. You're needed on deck. Captain Maggot wants to uh, wants to talk to you, give you the lowdown about uh, about your mission. Capital. Answer any questions you might have. <laughs> oh, good, because I got a lot of those. Like, wow, how did I get here? I'm starting to wonder that myself. Why am I on a boat ask... where the most appealing name is Lash? Might I remind you, I am Jorcerer the Sorcerer. <laughs> you might. <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna move out of uh, 
I'm waiting to be reminded. I'm Jorker the Sorcerer. Thank you. You see several, you see a, uh, a couple of deckhands working, working below, as well as several roughnecked looking, uh, folks who seem to be standing, uh, standing in front of a door. However, there is, uh, there is this flight of stairs that does seem to lead up to the, uh, main deck. I, I'll grab Hal, or Cal Hashwood yeah. to, you know, yeah, I, I'm kind of just assuming I'm like a, his version of a high seeing eye dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going somewhere. Cool. Yeah, buddy. We're going to go get you some fresh air, as I am given to understand you people like. Breathe. Yeah, we do that. It's, um... Yes, yes. You all are very, very insistent about it. Yeah, what, what do you mean, you people? All right. Oh, cool. That's, that's great. Um, you, you can't imagine why someone would trust this man with weapons, but he, uh, he kind of buckles on his sword as he goes. I should, like, not forget this. I should, like, not leave it lying around. That's not safe. I'm not sure what's less safe. You without it, or you with it. Oh, I totally know how to use this, man. It's fine. It's, it's all good. I'm, I haven't, like, accidentally cut myself and, like, um... Hold on, doing math on the fingers. Uh, it was that one time. Well, I for one am absolutely, totally reassured by his expertise. Now, what say you, my diminutive friend? Do we get the fuck out of here and away from this man in a puke-covered dress? <laughs> yes. Uh, come on, purple guy. Let's go be somewhere less stinky. Capital idea. Scabby Pete waves as you as you go. He's like, "Don't worry, your chamber pots will be the cleanest. You will be clean enough to eat out of when you get back." That's like uh, really not reassuring, man. I have never been so thankful to lack the need to eat. <laughs> yeah, you... I no longer have an appetite either. I'm sorry. I would like to roll around in my color spray for a while before I join the others. <laughs> <laughs> Sorcerer the sorcerer, motherfuckers. <laughs> it has begun. <laughs> it is pretty. All right. Well, the rest of you head up on deck. Lash follow, follows you. And he points to the uh, to the stern. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, that's that's the back of the ship. It's hard to tell, like, which way is which. <sighs> yes, that way. He points, and he he physically turns you in that direction. Oh. Cool, thank you, man. That's great. That's great. Nice. It's like real thoughtful. Yeah, Al's just Al's just already walking. Let's go. Did the deck stop moving? Did it ever like stop moving? Does anything ever truly stop moving? Whoa. Contemplate that as we walk closer to our destination. Well, Jorcerer is still below deck. Rolling in his own filth while uh, Scabby Pete. I'm rolling in my pretty vomit. My, it's it's magic. Okay, you're rolling your magical vomit while uh, while Scabby Pete scrubs out uh, the nearby chamber pot with his bare hands. It is grim below deck. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark. It's it real dark, real fast down there. In the meantime, up on deck, those of you who have approached uh, the captain, the captain kind of looks at you all, grumbles, and then he steps away. And uh, a woman who is with him steps forward. Mm. She's like, oh, you must you must be the volunteers. I think so. Sure. My name is Dan. Indeed. Stan Dan Deliver steps right up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love I love that you took, like, such a long, like, one move. I'm picturing, like, a cartoon character. <laughs> Just a giant long leg that stretches out. <laughs> Definitely the pew-whip. Yep. Looney Tunes move. <laughs> let's, let's be careful with this word volunteer, because that typically denotes not getting paid. Well, you're here, aren't you? My surly friend has oh. his heart in the right place. We're all here for something. Me, I'm definitely here for good reasons. <laughs> I would humbly recommend avoiding questions that could invo invoke bouts of ennui and deep reflection. Otherwise, Cal may not pay attention for several hours. I don't even know what those words mean. Oh no, man, I'm all about the depth. 
like the ocean. <laughs> yes, that is unfortunately the problem at times. It's a clockwork man. That's fascinating. <sighs> you could say he's got his head screwed on correctly. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! It's a tangle of limbs and muscle and flesh. What? Pulp bound together into sentience. How fascinating. Sorcerer the Sorcerer would like to rise above deck and say, Did I hear the word vomiteer? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. He's not going to puke on us again, is he? I do not have my spells until tomorrow. Lash looks at you and says, Get over there with the captain or we will throw you overboard. <laughs> Is it speaking to me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he turns you towards the rear of the ship. He's like, that way, you bloody vomit soaked fool. Hello, Captain. <laughs> I'm not, not the captain, you moron. <laughs> you look like a captain. Excuse me, pardon me. Hello. <sighs> I am Jorsel the Sorcerer. <laughs> well, it we're going to have to come up with a short name for that. Just moving over here. <laughs> I gotta say, like, that name is really uncomfortable. It kind of feels like if Greece were a person? Whoa. John Travolta? <laughs> what? No. Such arcane what? mumblings from this strange sorceress beast. Gentlemen, I'm glad you're all here. Are we waiting for anybody else, or uh, is this everyone? I believe it's one person too many, but please carry on. Oh. <laughs> well, my name my name is Petra. I am the uh, I am the first mate here. I apologize for the captain. He doesn't like speaking to non-crew members. Considers it bad luck and well, you know, superstition and all. But uh, I'm here to give you the to give you the uh, I guess uh, the orientation, if you will. Delighted. Mm. So, first off, I should uh, I should warn you that uh, there are some rules to the ship until we set uh, until we until we set uh, port in uh, in the town of Brian Moss where we're heading. And as long as you follow those rules, we'll be all uh, all one big happy family here. I'm not related to any of you people. I love rules. Rules are great. <laughs> Excellent. I love family. <laughs> <laughs> she she turns she turns to your torso and says that could be a problem as i as i as i will get to just going to move over here so the first the first rule of being aboard aboard the harpooned willy is well obviously you're here you're here as uh i won't say guests you're you're here as volunteers so uh the first rule is really to do as you're told uh ships run best when there's a chain of command and uh well, all of you, you're kind of at the bottom of it. Oh, man, that's rough. That is rather disappointing, yes. Why Why does the chain have to have a top and a bottom? Why can't the chain just go side to side? It's a chain. It's not a stick. But, like, chains, chains like, pull on stuff. I pull on stuff. I'm gonna, like, move over <laughs> here. Yes, everybody raises a good point, except for that fellow there. <laughs> so, um, taking a step to the side. <laughs> She's like, well, the other thing chains do is, well, they bind ar arms and legs in case you don't follow the rules. And speaking of which, the second one is no, mu no mutinies, please. The captain hates those. Oh, I'm sure we can manage. Excellent, excellent. I'm making uh, no promises. What must one do to get their arms and legs bound by chains? <laughs> well, if you don't follow the rules, that's an excellent way of doing it. I'm glad you asked that. I don't think that was a deterrent. <laughs> you ought to be careful about lashing that one. <laughs> <laughs> the second deterrent, if the first one doesn't work, I will say, is is binding you with, with, with heavy chains, and then, well, probably throwing you overboard. Where, uh, Staying on the surface tends to be kind of difficult. Hey, Tin Guy, do you breathe? I do not believe I'm actually composed predominantly of tin, but to answer your question and the implied one, not enough for it, uh, it to be substantially detrimental. However, I would be very inconvenienced by the chains that lodge me to the bottom of the ocean floor. 
I just wanted to know who to blame. I'd have to like go down there and like try to pull him back up and I don't breathe so good underwater. As as most people do not. Yeah. Yes, it is very sad for you all. Crazy, isn't it? Hmm. Yes. For those of you who are new to being on a boat, uh, allow me to explain. Uh, we're surrounded by water. So any attempt to displease the captain will end up with you likely in that water, in which case your chances for survival go down considerably. Well, heaven forbid we should displease a captain. <laughs> Excellent. Which uh, which will be my fourth point as uh, when we get to it. So the third rule of the ship is... Uh, you're allowed up on deck here, and obviously in the, on the cabin level. Kindly stay out of the hold. We're we're carrying cargo that is really uh, the captain keeps a very tight accounting system, and he doesn't like anything to disrupt that. So we would really appreciate it if uh, if you stayed out of there. Also, we have men guarding it, so if you try going down there, they will try to bash your skulls in. Sounds sensible. Which brings us to the final rule. Up at the stern, manning uh, the ballistas, uh, just in case we come across, uh, you know, any any pirates or such, um, you're going to find a rather attractive woman, and uh, that's the captain's daughter, and, uh, well, no fucking her. The captain really, really doesn't like that. First of all, it's, it's kind of bad luck to have women aboard a ship as it is, but it's even worse luck when it's family... And he he catches somebody's, I oh, don't know, peg leg in a place it doesn't belong. You know how it is. That's... Through tremendous strength of will, I shall resist the urge. Excellent. No, no, man, just don't do it. That's just like, no. It is not made of wood. I don't like him. So do as we're told. Don't steal shit and don't fuck the captain's daughter. What was yeah, the first one really... again? Uh, no mutinies. It seems to me that all those other rules are rather dependent on our compliance with the first one. Just pointing that out, fellows. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, etc. Don't wink at me. It does form the basis of the pyramid of obedience. It does, but like they kind of get, they kind of grow in severity. So, for example, if the captain says to scrub the deck and you decide not to, well, that's. That's annoying, but it's not really a capital offense. Versus, he goes down and he finds you with his daughter in his bed. That's a little bit more severe. So, yes, they kind of stem from that first rule, but they kind of grow from there. But you, you all see, you all seem like a, like a like a, a reasonable lot. And she she makes it a point not to look at George Rur when she says that. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll have her. no problems. Is there any chance I might be strangled instead of drowned? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It'll be easier if you need it. I guess I could check with uh, with Quartermaster Lash on that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a note of that, and I'll, I'll be sure to get back to you. Cal leans over to uh, to Metallica Zam at uh, Stan's winking. She goes, why is he winking? I do believe he has a penchant for danger. Oh. Oh. Uh. A couple of subtle lads. You'll make you'll make f fine additions to my band of subtle rogues. God help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Petra, you've been absolutely charming, and I've taken on board everything you said to the, the nth degree, possibly even higher than that. You needn't worry about any single one of us. We'll be good as gold, I assure you. That's excellent, because I wasn't finished. <laughs> Oh, oh, brilliant. Please continue. Oh. Now, now, while you're on board, you'll be expected to act as ship security. This is kind of a, this is kind of the deal we make with the Kingdom of Zamel in order to transport people. As I said, we we are heading toward the ports the port town of Brine Moss. If you have any questions about our uh, our port of call, I am more than happy to answer it. Yeah. How briny is the moss? I am led to believe uh, we've made this trip several times, and I can say it is quite briny. Okay. Capital. So I probably got to, like, dry it out first. You will find a thriving uh, a thriving industry with regards to that, I, will, I dare say. 
If it is not thriving now, it will be once Cal arrives. Who are we securing things from? Evil and wicked and inj- <clears throat> My- my apologies. <laughs> hmm. My diminutive friend raises a good point. Uh, what kind of uh, security threats might we expect to be party to during this, our last leg of this voyage? Ah, well, we'll be sailing through uh, rather infested waters. Um, sharks are always uh, an issue, although being here on the boat, uh, they tend not to be too much. Um, I, I, I do know that uh, one of our, uh, our sister ships was sunk by a kraken uh, last month. Uh, that was a rather nasty bit of business. Oof. Uh, uh, the bottom line is uh, the life of a sailor is a dangerous one. One, one can never tell what, uh, what might be lurking uh, just below the surface of the water. Or indeed on a boat just behind you. <laughs> do we have any normal sized squids to be aware of? Perhaps... Extra large, magnum sized. Well, uh, sure. Uh, we normally don't go fishing for for those. I mean, we normally try to catch uh, just normal fish for uh, for our meals. But I mean, I suppose if we were to hook a large squid, uh, uh, that could be an interesting uh, an interesting problem. Which, of course, we would we would be more than happy for uh, all of you to take care of. I will take care of it personally. Excellent. Squids like. Make ink and stuff. Well, make more than that. Drink uh, ink. It's just. Is it? Is it just drink? Der ink. Der or ink. Is it ink that is a doctor? Oh shit! I didn't think of that. Huh. Well, um, this is all fascinating. Do you have any other questions for me or the or the captain? If not, uh, well. Running a ship does require a decent amount of work. I'm. Where does course, Scabby Pete sleep? She calls over. She's like, Quartermaster Lash, uh, a question about where Scabby Pete sleeps? He looks up and he's like, Wherever the fool passes out. Hmm. I sleep there as well. <laughs> well, you can sleep with Scabby Pete. I want to make sure Scabby Pete doesn't sleep anywhere near me. Very wise, my diminutive friend. I don't know what diminutive means, but I think I'm going to have to punch you if you call me that again. It means excellent. <laughs> oh, all right then. That's fine. Now, might I have a quiet word of you? Seeing as we're on security detail, you look like a chap who can take care of himself. And I did mention earlier that I'm in need of a bodyguard. Experienced adventurer, though I may be, you may have noticed I'm getting rather on in years. How would you fancy a silver a day to do violence to people on my behalf? <laughs> a silver a day retainer and a silver for everybody I punch on your behalf. Uh, hmm. Who do we get to decide who is an actual person? Because I've seen some people on this boat and I don't think they're quite there yet. <laughs> if, if they need punching, they're people. If they don't need punching, their furniture. Okay. That is an oddly egalitarian view. Sensible chap, that mechanical man. Uh, I tell you what, mm -hmm. a silver a day, free silvers should you have to punch anyone, with no upper limit on the punching. Five silvers. Deal. Five silvers if I have to punch anyone. Two silvers if I punch someone just because I want to. That does rather seem like I'm funding your leisure activities, friend. Yes. It does. <laughs> Would you mind funding my leisure? <laughs> By all the demons in hell, no! <laughs> Cal is still ruminating on the furniture bit and is looking around and he kind of just goes, I don't see anybody shaped like a chair. Keep looking. Huh. I can violate furniture. All of these people hey. raise excellent points. Greybeard, is punching the pukey guy going to be two silvers or five silvers? Because we know we're getting there at some point. I'm not sure I can pay for your health insurance afterwards. I would counsel going for five as you would have to touch him in that circumstance. We're all friends here, I've just decided. We're not <laughs> none of us bureaucrats. Let's just uh, say only uh, two silvers a day for the time being. And, uh... We'll shake on that, my friend, while our hands are still clean. 
and not covered in puke. I'm not touching you. <laughs> I, I punch things. You can just wave your hand around. I once learnt of a culture that didn't shake hands, but did an interpretive <laughs> dance of agreement. I will now perform that. <laughs> <laughs> I am entertained. Fuck it. I, I haven't pushed a button yet. I'm going to roll performance. I was. I, I was hope you took performance. <laughs> a fourteen. I'm. I am entertained. I will now punch people for two silvers a day. Huzzah! The, the captain steps up, steps up to uh, to his first mate and whispers in his ear or in her ear, and she turns and she's like, oh, "Good news! The captain was impressed. Um, you get to perform for the crew tonight as well." Oh well, if the price is right. We'll see what happens. The price is uh, following rule number one. Do as you're told. I thought rule number one was don't mutiny. But but I'm rather getting on in years. I can't remember how many people I'm going to mutiny against. (laughs) Hopefully zero. Mutinies are not covered in our financial arrangement. Such a charming woman. (laughs) Now, uh, now, gents, if uh, if there's no questions about our port of call, um, if you'll excuse me, as I said, running a ship requires a decent amount of uh, of of concentration. Uh, we we would hate to founder and uh, and sink because, well, that would kill us all. Uh, we only have so many uh, so many long boats to go around, and well, um, there's a good chance you wouldn't rate one of them uh, being the cause of uh, our foundering. Uh, how many long boats? Just out of curiosity. I believe we have a standard complement of four. Mm. I don't take up much space. It'll be fine. Hmm. Well, yes, but like, you know, if the ship sinks and it's your fault, the captain will most likely take some offense to that, I'm afraid. I won't get and in the boat happens, with him. Well, 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 there probably won't be, there probably purposely won't be room for you. Uh, I mean, normally the captain would like be more than happy to give you a scabby pizza spot, but uh, if you were to do that, you might actually rate below scabby Pete's, which really is just an embarrassing way to go. <laughs> well, heaven forfend. We should offend anyone. What time of day is it now? It's still morning, although it is oh. getting uh, getting on in time. All right, well, w- is there a crow's nest at the top of these uh, large sails? Uh, yes, there is. All right, well, if it's all, if, if it's all the same to everyone, I would like to sleep up there. I have no objections to this. She's like, well, we have we have lookouts who are posted up there. Um, if you're sleeping, they really can't do their job. Oh, well, all right. uh, never mind. I mean, if you're going to be up, if you're going to be up all night, uh, you know, acting as lookout. Oh, I, I dare say, um, I, I don't want to seem racist or anything, but you kind of appear to be a human, and uh, well, humans kind of lack this thing called dark vision, which kind of makes them a little less useful as lookouts in the in, in at night. Um, I, I, like I said, I don't want to offend anybody. But... Humans can't see in the dark? Yes. I just wanted to ride in the crow's nest. Bless that man. He has the heart of a child and the body of a child molester. <laughs> <laughs> so then, I suppose we should take up patrol? Yeah. That would be an Excellent idea. A strategic man, a cunning man. A man made of tin. I like the cut of his jib. Yes, a man who understands the ability to walk away from the smellier sources <laughs> with an excuse that is also work. I will warn uh, Jorster if you decide to go up the crow's nest. It is uh, it is about 50 feet uh, off the deck and uh, will require probably a relatively, uh, a relatively challenging climb check uh, uh, Especially if you need to come down in a hurry. I'll wait for or, tomorrow or, morning. I have absolutely 100% faith in that chubby man to climb that pole. <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely total faith in his ability to come down quickly. Aha! I have faith? I guess it would be nice. <laughs> nice, John. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have uh, have anything of uh, particular interest they wish to uh, to to do for the day, or uh, you just gonna settle in and uh, your new uh, your new roles? Uh, she said it probably will take about two days for the for us to reach our, our 
our destination. I wasn't really paying attention to what we were supposed to do, so I um I will follow uh this uh what's his name? Um Stan Dandy Liver seems like he knows what's going on. <laughs> oh dear. I'll, just, I'll shadow him. Uh Stan Dandy Liver will, despite being a very mixed company, make a show of being very authoritative and uh very hard working when it comes to pre- looking like he's doing some work in the whole security aspect of things. That sounds perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. I will follow his example. Stan Dandelive is making a very like uh, informed show of being professional which is nothing but hindered by the vomit soaked sorcerer following him around. <laughs> well, it's it's also hindered by the, by the fact that uh, when uh, when the ship is not under threat, uh, walking around and uh, and acting like it is, is kind of just standing out not in a good way. <laughs> well, we'll see who I can convince about uh, how how much of a security risk we're currently under. Al will oh, stand no. at the base of this mast and glower at people. Do you think I employ this angry gnome because I feel safe? Not so. So many threats. So many threats. Mm. Indeed. Cal is gonna is gonna follow Metallicazam around and just like stare at the pieces of the ship like he's seeing them for the first time. See how this mighty and vomit soaked sorcerer follows me around. He too realizes that we've come under attack at any moment. We must all be vigilant, even this weirdo. <laughs> all right, I'll just say that too. See how this dandy man leads. <laughs> Follows me from the front and gives <laughs> all So shall I. So shall you all. See how he mumbles his arcane gibberish, preparing his mighty spells, I've no doubt. <laughs> See how he stands and, and dandy livers. <laughs> Absolutely. The crew, the crew, uh, the crew seems uh, suitably distracted, uh, you know, watching you two uh, carry on uh, to the point where Lash actually has to pull out his cat of nine tails and smack around, scrubbing the deck and uh, hoisting the mainsails and such. Keep up the good work, Lash. Oh, what did they do right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> fucking. I guess I'll uh, throw a perception out to see if there's any fish visible in the water as we're sailing past. It, Nine. There's a lot of water to see, but uh, not a drop to drink, and nothing seems to be nothing that you can see swimming. In Cal it. will also make a perception check to see if there are any interesting fish. That is a ten. See how my companions stare out into the horizon for any potential threats that might befall us. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, etc. Give me a survival check. Uh, a survival check, Joe. All right. All right, that is a 19. All right. You found Cthulhu. You don't see you don't see any fish, but you think you do. So you stand there pointing out uh pointing out uh fish to uh to Kazet Metal Kazam who uh who, you don't see anything there. That's like a white striped carp. Uh and that that's a uh, uh, that's a dragged marley. Uh, let's see here. What's that? Um, I don't know what that is, but it's cool looking. Yes, yes, it is. Now we'll pat him on the back. <laughs> Stand dandy liver. We'll talk to the nearest crewman and say, "See how keen-eyed my half elven friend is, seeing fish that you couldn't possibly see." <laughs> and I'll Very true. Roll a deception on that. <laughs> Ah, uh, only a nine. <laughs> I mean, in a way, you're not wrong. <laughs> Jorcer the Sorcerer would like to make a perception check for squids. Please, Stan, you actually, uh, you spook a few of the men. You know, they're like, they're like what, 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 what are these devil fish you speak of? We see fish we cannot? They're totally there. Don't worry, my friends, we'll keep you safe. We're in charge of security. Oh, wow. If I blink, they're not there. I wonder if we should tie a rope to you and tie a rope to 
what's his face here in case he falls off from falls overboard from looking at the fish Oh, our keen-eyed uh, warrior friend would never just fall overboard like a fucking idiot, I'm sure. Yes, yes, perhaps lashing that to the mast and one end to my friend's belt is indeed a wise choice. Cal can be impulsive when he sees things that are, well, in need of justice! <laughs> uh, in need of remedy. Sure, sir. You don't see any squid, but you do see a uh, a fin off the starboard side. Ooh, there's a fin, friend. I am totally into justice. It's great. Yes, justice. One of my favorite things. Absolutely, top five at least. What are you talking about, my vomit soaked companion? Does the fin seem like something I could put my member in? <laughs> Well, the fin is a good 25 feet off the uh, off the starboard CERN, so uh, you might need to get a little closer. <laughs> what exactly are you packing under those ropes, you rogue? Right, uh, is anyone else looking at the fin? I, we're, we're definitely following your gaze. I don't know if we can see it or not. I'm not. Uh, everybody give me a perception check if you're following his gaze. 22. <laughs> well, since, uh, since somebody is pointing it out to you, and that is uh, and, an 11. And John. I don't give a shit. I'm not looking. <laughs> okay. I'm to secure the boat, not the water. You all uh, you all see what appears to be a, a, a medium-sized uh, shark, maybe about 10 feet in uh, length, uh, swimming through the waters. Whoa. I would presume these are the types of threats for which we are expected to perform violence? Look at the size of that thing. It's at least 50 feet long. Lucky we're here. Petra Petra looks looks at you medical exam she, and she's like she's like that's that that's just a reef shark. They're relatively common. Uh, they probably won't bother us on, unless a man goes overboard, which uh which hopefully does not happen. Um especially and, and and no offense since your some of your friends seem a little impulsive, let me just say hopefully it does not happen on purpose. Yes, L. Perhaps we should uh, hop to on securing Cal to the mast. That seems imperative. That thing is so big. Oh boy, I hope Cal or I hope Al has a better uh, survival. Or wait, what do you want us to roll for um, tying up, tying off the rope, Rick? Um, let's do opposed uh, survival checks. I mean, he's not leaping off the ship. Well, yeah, I, 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 well, actually, I guess a lot depends on Cal. Are you letting them tie you up? <laughs> uh, are they just tying it to his tying it to his belt, or are they like straight up lashing him to the? Yeah, belt? I'm just. Metallic Azam is tie is like tying off to the back of your belt. Uh, he's not gonna fight it. We have that's... trust. I'm not very. I don't do a very good job though. <laughs> no, no, that's, <laughs> a, that's a, Al rolls a twenty for survival. Metallic Azam just ties his mittens together. <laughs> yeah. Oh bother! Oh bother! Yes, yeah, so you you think you tied it to his belt, and then he like walk walks away, and the, the rope just falls to the back to the deck. Mm. Oh shit! Did you do the thing with your hands again? Ah, uh, yes. Perhaps I should attempt another go at this. All right, a fifteen. Practice makes perfect, my dude. <laughs> I love that we're just assuming Joe's going overboard. <laughs> well, it's not an unreasonable not. assumption given the, how he's been talking so far. <laughs> and you're a paladin. My end is secure. Fifteen is 15, fifteen is pretty good. How much of a how much of a leash did you did you give him? How long was the rope? Fifty feet. Uh, let's say maybe ten on each side to like wrap it around the mast and his uh, belts and get a good like strong go. So thirty feet. He's got thirty feet of of rope. Oddly enough, that is enough for him to still fall overboard. But uh... <laughs> yes, but also for us to pull him back. <laughs> I got but, two uh, belts. He's the paladin. He's gonna want to get into stabby range. All right. So you, so you, you are basically tied to this location. You can, you must stay within uh, thirty feet of it. Okay. See how we secure your crewmen against the oncoming threat of that ferocious sea beast. By God, we're good at our job. So obedient too. <laughs> you hear uh, as uh, as you are going about your thing, tying off your friend. Um, another crewman from further up, uh, further up, he you hear uh, you hear him cry out, "There she blows off the starboard!" 
Eh, who what's? I did no such thing. <laughs> I wasn't looking. I can't vouch for him. I'm not with that guy. <laughs> what's a starboard? But Petra points, and she's like, that side. Oh. Morons. There's a star on board? Everybody give me a perception. Nine. A five. Al rolls a 20. Sorcerer the Sorcerer rolls a 19. Uh, Cal rolls a 12. Stan is uh, is far too uh, far too interested in uh, in showing off to the uh, to the crewmen, trying to act like he is big and brave. The rest of you see a uh, a rather large uh, killer whale surface uh, surface off the uh, off the starboard side. Uh, the water around it is thrashing quite a bit. As as Petra says, I think uh, I think we're in for a bit of a show, uh, gents. Oh shit! Looks like we're gonna have to do some actual work. Can we tell if it's a male or female? Jesus. You can't really tell much because next to it surfaces, uh, you know, a rather large uh, shark. The the killer whale, it's about 30 feet long, but a shark about 20 feet in size surfaces next to it, and they appear to be uh, battling. I'm going to throw mage armor on myself. <laughs> Just very, very stalwartly Metallica Zam <laughs> cast mage armor. <laughs> Aren't you where this is going. mage armor? Isn't that... Don't you just call that skin? You know the diminutive thing you referenced earlier? It's not not racist just because I don't have flesh. Hmm. Yeah, man, don't. That's not cool. Hmm. Well, my gnomish friend, it looks like we're about to find out that pretending to be uh, in charge of security is a lot easier than actually being in charge of security. Hmm. But still, two silver, eh? Right. Well, as you watch, several of the crewmen break away from their uh, from their from their work, and they go to stand to the side of the ship you know, to watch. And uh, I will reach deeply into my pockets to rummage for my spell components. Well, Alphonse and Jorcerer, um, since you got really high perception checks, you also notice in addition to this fight that seems to be going. Uh, on off the off the side, as he's, uh, this whale and this shark appear to be battling out. You notice that the crew members seem to be exchanging monies as they uh, as they bet on who's going to win. And now we've got something that Al's interested in. Who who looks like they're the bookie? You see, uh, you see a dirty looking man, uh, gr not as dirty as Scabby Pete, uh, up near uh, up near the uh, the bow, and he seems to be collecting folks' money. Let's go talk to the dirty guy. What's the... What are the odds? Hey, my friends. Well, I'm let's Morty. not get out of hand. Well, so far the odds are looking... Uh, looking... Uh, three to two in favor of the whale. Which uh, which is... Uh, poor, which is pretty surprising. I mean, that is a rather large shark out there. I dare say... Uh, if it was one of us overboard, I think the odds would be more like 20 to 1 against... But that is a killer whale, and uh, killer whales are well known for killing things. Uh, As you dibs on the blowhole. Uh, <laughs> oh God! A woman steps up next to you, and she hands uh, she hands M Morty, uh, you know, she hands him ten gold pieces. She's like, "Put it on the shark. I like an underdog." Hmm. How she much of this do we you. pick on? Uh, pick up on. Al's gonna do the exact same thing. <laughs> Only Al and uh, and Jorcer were noticed. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm in. I'll put ten on the shark. She turns to you, Al, and she says, "I don't believe we've met." I'm Maggie. Alphonse Lightbringer. You can call me Al. Maggie, Maggie Maggot. You can call me third mate, unless you've had more than the, more than that amount of mates. A gentleman never uh, mates and tells, and neither do I. As this is going on. DM's rolling. Am I getting slapped for that? Nope. It's uh, it's on between the whale and the uh, and the shark. You see, uh, you see the whale attempt to uh, to ram the shark. It misses. Um, and a spray of blood uh, comes up as the shark uh, as the shark latches onto one of the uh, whale's fins with its teeth. Maggie is all. She's like, "Ooh, Mama's feeling lucky tonight." How about you? We'll see how lucky Mama's <laughs> feeling later. You put ten gold on the shark as well? All right. Yeah. All right, the battle continues. Shark versus whale. Shark versus whale. 
This time they both uh, take a chunk out of each other as uh, as the battle continues. Give me a perception check. Stan Dan Deliver rolls a 10. Metallicazam has a 5. Al's attention is elsewhere, so he rolls a 9. Cal rolls a 16. Do any of my compatriots have bows? Uh, nope. I do. You probably noticed. I'm, we- I'm openly wearing a quiver on my back, so that's probably something you would have noticed. <laughs> well, of all of them, Cal, you were the only one not caught by the surpri- by surprise as the uh, as the ship suddenly lurches in the water. Oh, yep. Okay, there it is. I knew this boat never stopped moving. And creatures surface along uh, alongside of it. Now would be an excellent time to, uh, well, do initiative. Oh, dear. Remember that? What an unexpected and completely oh, unforeseen right. turn of events. Uh, Cal rolls a 12. Stan Dandeliver rolls an 11. Al rolls a 15. Metallicazam has a 7. Uh, Jorcer the Sorcerer rolls a 15. All right. This one latches on. These creatures, uh, these creatures look like semi-humanoid, half fish, half cat, half horror. <laughs> Brace yourself, lads. We're about to get catfished. <laughs> As this one climbs on board and scuttles over, and uh, Alf, Al, you're the closest. So it uh, it takes a slash at you with its claws. Does a 12 hit you? <laughs> no. All right. Jorcerer, you were caught by surprise, so... Alphonse, you were caught by surprise. Which brings us to Cal. You were the only one not caught by surprise, so you may act. All right. Uh, let's see here. Which? Where's the nearest one? One off to the side. They're all on the map, so... Uh... Oh, there we go. Now, now I see. Yeah, Cal's going to move to the extent of the rope. Uh, and he's going to draw his sword and basically be like, Yo, Metallic Zam, we got to, like, do the thing now. The the thing with the, the hero stuff with the fight. Oh, fuck it. I have heard more inspiring battle cries in my time. I'm not going to lie to you. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going up this. Hold on a second. I got to move. I gotta move my she here. I'm gonna move up to about here. I think I can get to about here, the edge. Oh, uh, yeah, you definitely can. Uh, and the creature's and, hanging uh, off the side, so there is, uh, you can definitely get a, uh, you can reach it. Get a swing in. Yep, all right. Um, Take how inebriated are you right now? Uh, not super. Obviously, he's functional. I don't know. Compared to your normal stoned, how stoned? Um, are you? probably, uh, probably less. Probably less than normal. He's probably coming off of it rather than going into okay, it. Okay, then. Uh, I will yeah, we start... have just come out of a crowded cabin. Yeah. I, I will say you don't have to uh, make a uh, a save to keep from tumbling overboard. Okay. Gonna do the cut thing. Uh, that is uh, that's a nine. That miss. That misses. Yeah. Oh shit! Okay, I <laughs> deck won't stop moving. All right, stand, Dan, deliver. You are also surprised. This is surprising. Yeah. That brings up this one. Let's see here. Cal, you are the closest since you just took a swing at it, and it takes a little bit of exception to that. Oh, it... Understandably so. Yes. Yeah. It's holding on with one with one arm, so it only gets. A bite and a claw at you. I think the cl- uh, seven, I'm assuming, misses. Yeah. Does a 20 hit you? Yes. All right. It bites your arm uh, for uh, for four damage. All right. I'm going to put my AC down. All right. There we go. This one clambers on board, and, uh, well, it has a bunch of crewmen in front of it. This one was going after some uh, some unfortunate crewmen. Poor unfortunate crew. <laughs> <laughs> now dead. Now, now dead. dead. It manages to uh to tear one uh tear to disembowel one. Wow. All right. Stan Dim Deliver says very loudly, Wow, imagine how many crewmen would be dead if we weren't in charge of security. Just goes to show 
<laughs> All right. Well, the one uh, over here steps up and uh, Al, you and Maggie are closest. So it decides to uh, split its uh, attention between the two of you. Come at me, furball. A 13? AC? Nope. How about a 22? 22 will get you there. All right. It slashes you and tries to push you, but uh, but Morty is uh, is in the way, so you don't move. And then it attempts to uh, attack Maggie, and it does uh, it does hit her. And she uh, she gets knocked back. How much damage do I you take? Take five uh, five slashing. All right, now Jorcerer, the surprise round is over. You can uh, these creatures using the distraction of uh, the two fight fighters out there. You can. Uh, uh, do these creatures look vaguely humanoid? Not really. They're about uh, about ten feet tall, uh, green, scaly. Uh, they have claws. They have fins. Um, they kind of look like you know, kind of like what you might imagine a nightmare mermaid might look like. All right. Well, my disguise self to turn into one of them is probably not going to work then. <laughs> <laughs> Do not know. You never know until all you right, try. All right. All right. Well, yeah. You know, you don't know until you try. All right, I would like to do that. Disguise right. self, and I will make does noises. That, <laughs> does that change uh, your size? Uh, let's see it. Uh, I can see him one foot shorter or taller. I can appear okay. thin, fat, or in between. I can be a, like a short one of them, a runty one. Okay, well, everybody there watches as uh, Jorcerer turns into a... Uh, a slightly smaller version of those uh, of those creatures. Egad, right. Petra, and look out! It's one of that children. And I, will, I will. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna get the jump on them later. Right now, I'm gonna just say, I, I, I'm gonna make noises that reflect what they do. <laughs> oogala boogala. Give me a give me a deception check. <laughs> uh, oh, natural twenty. Oogala boogala <laughs> apparently yeah. is what they say all the time <laughs> oh dear I've, I've got them right where i want them i don't know who them is or but, <laughs> or what you want but well that is an interesting uh oh as, as long, I, I gotta move right oh yeah you do um yeah i'm gonna move back here and like oogla boogla i'm going to fight these people back here. Oogala boogala. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm, I, to be clear, I'm not going to fight these people back here. All right. To be clear, you rolled a natural 20 on deception. They don't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jorcerer the Sorcerer. <laughs> so Al looks down at his torso and you tore my robes gonna have to fuck you up now so first I'm going to make an unarmed strike and does a 13 hit no these things appear to have very uh very he thick scales okay then I'm gonna spend a key point and then I'm going to use flurry of blows and go for two more unarmed strikes uh, how about a 20? That hits. For 7 and a 17? That also hits. All right, so I'll deal 11. You, uh, you, you definitely deck it really good. Now go away. Cal! Yeah, Cal is going to basically, like, heave back again. All right, all right, all right, I got this, I got this, I got this. Okay, I can do this. Do the thing. I got to do the thing with the, the sharp sword and the cutting. And all right, here we go, here we go. And he's gonna cut, and that's a twenty-three. That is a that is a hit. All right, and that is six damage. You slice into it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, okay. Hey, hey, Metallic Zam, see you see that? Outstanding. However, it's its turn now. Oh shit! It doesn't appear to be uh, too happy for that. Does a thirteen hit you? Nope. All right, then it misses takes a slash, tries to bite you, 
but then uh, your drunken weaving it almost becomes like a fighting style, and you uh, <laughs> dodge out of the way. I I have seen this temple. I am familiar St with this. Stan, there is there is a creature standing next to you going oogla boogla. <laughs> Stand back, fair petter. I'll defend you. And I'm going to uh, take a slash with my rapier at the creature that just rolled a natural 20 in deception. Oh, no. For a nine. I don't have my armor class, but I don't think that hits because I don't think I have any penalties. <laughs> Stay back, beast. Take your oogla boogler elsewhere. Um, I will say, okay, I'll stand back. Stop swinging your sword at me, idiot. Nice. Surprisingly articulate for a for a sea creature. What happened to Oogla Boogla? <laughs> You've been to college, college boy. <laughs> I am not Jorcer the Sorcerer. Well, that's evident. You don't look a thing like him. You're much more attractive. Now get back, I say. <laughs> All right, I will. I will get back on my turn. Metal Kazam. <laughs> All right, uh, seeing as my friend uh, is having an issue, I will uh, open up by doing a Told the Dead cantrip on the one that he has been fighting. So he has to make a wisdom save of DC 14. Oh, he gets great. a 19. All right, he's fine. Uh, so Metallicazam throws that out, uh, then begins to say, All right, then I think we can... Oh, justice! And, uh, uh, well, he's <laughs> casting spiritual weapon, uh, but the flavor is basically he opens his mouth and a burst of magic comes tearing forth in the form of a blazing sword. <laughs> Boop. Yeah. And, uh, sword screamings for the fight. Uh, and yeah, so I'll do my spiritual weapon attack now. Justice slash. Uh, does a 17 hit? That very much hits. Nine damage, force and magical. You scream out for justice, and justice delivered as it falls off the side of the boat and sinks beneath the waves. The blade uh, kind of swings around. Outstanding! And Metallicazam's just like, uh, oh no. <laughs> no, man, that was totally awesome. Uh, and then uh, for my move action, I will shift more toward the middle of the boat, right about here. All right, this one. Unfortunately, this time, Morty is the uh, is the victim. He like falls to the deck, coins rolling off, dropping from his hand as they all roll overboard. Hey now, oh. I should get a reaction. Do you have a reaction? Fuck no. Okay, then you don't. Profanity. Petra drums down, and uh, she seems slightly less than uh then happy I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume a 22 most certainly hits you uh Jorcerer <laughs> good shot <laughs> lady. that'll show the car it uh hits you twice hits you it, she stabs you twice for 14 damage oh well fortunately I don't have any hit points either <laughs> <laughs> I had them in D and D Beyond. I, I guess I didn't put them over here. Maybe open up D and D Beyond and find out. Mm -hmm. I know. I think I have more than fourteen. Why don't you make sure? I mean, sure? you're a fourth level spellcaster. So... Um, I've got no dex bonus, so and no armor, so that's a straight up ten armor class, correct? That is a ten. I'm yeah. A, I have an armor class. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> As Petra finishes her move, stabbing a Jorcerer several times, the captain uh, heads down and uh, to finish the job she started. And I think that is a good place for us to uh, end for this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, I'm expecting some workers' comp. These people are stupid. <laughs> So far, only one of us has negotiated wages out of this deal, and you ain't me. I'm the only employer here so far, and I'm stabbing you. It's not looking great. I, you know, I was getting ready to go 
take one of them down by deceit. Instead, the whole fucking crew stabs me while... Uh, natural 20. <laughs> natural 20 <laughs> <and> Oogala Boogala. <laughs> it was an outstanding Oogala Boogala. I think as a sorcerer, you are far more deceptive than you've ever been as a rogue. <laughs> Got that high charisma now. It's dangerous. So, so Jorcerer has survived his the first game, but will he survive the second? Will the group survive their uh, their their first encounter? <laughs> More importantly, will Jorcerer survive friendly fire? Tune in uh, next time for uh, well, maybe not next time. We'll see when we want to play next. But tune in next time we play for side quest. Bye bye. 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 Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us, the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. Oogala boogala!